That is so gross, but such good information. If you get into any trouble with bed bugs or other pests, give E. coli a call today. I'm kind of shocked, actually, that it's we're number two as being the worst in the nation for bed bugs. You need to carry an infrared light when you go traveling. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. And keep your stuff off the floor. That's great information. Now, we do have Brian Milholland from Sol uh, uh, Milholland Solar Electric and Roofing. Now, listen, guys, utility rates are changing. And this is not good news for us. That's what you wanted to talk about this morning. Absolutely. And we're, we want to talk about the history of the rate changes. But before we do, what market is the most expensive when it comes to energy? Yeah, California is the most expensive market in the nation. Hands down, to, right? Oh, yeah, by far. And so, it's no coincidence that California also has the best solar market and the highest utility rates. They, they go hand in hand. Hand right? in hand. Yeah. So explain what tiers are and how, what that means to your bill. So residential uh, utility customers are charged in tiers. So the, you start off in tier one, and the more utility, uh, more electricity that you use over the month, your rate increases. Okay. So you, so you go up a tier the more you use. It's sort of like that. Right. So they, they're punishing the gross users of electricity by having them pay more. Okay. And so we have a chart that shows kind of the baseline and the history of the, the rate changes. Right. So the graph that we have shows the history of the rates um, over time in California, I think it's the, the last 10 years, um, so that the, you can see that the tiers um, increased over time and the, the higher tiers increased more dramatically over time until about a year and a half ago, and they started increasing the lower tiers also. Um, and is that because the heavy users got solar, so now the, the utility company has to make up the difference by charging the lower users? Well, when the utility looks at making more money, um, you know, everybody uses tier one and tier two every month. So they increase the rates on tier one and tier two across the board. So that was an across the board rate increase on all users. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So just being a user automatically, playing the game, quote unquote, right. you are a user. Okay. All right. So here's the chart that's up. And you can see that the, uh, the squiggly lines, you got blue, orange, and then the two purple lines. So the blue and the orange are tier one and two. And you can see how they've kind of fluctuated, but stayed pretty low um, until 2014. And at that point, the utilities were allowed to start increasing uh, tier one and two. The green line that comes across there that's going down, that's the cost for solar over the years. And, and so you can see now that the cost for solar per kilowatt is way less than your baseline rate for electricity. So when you go solar, you're, you're automatically lower than the cost of electricity from the utilities. Well, when I look at this now, the solar cost has definitely flattened out. So yes. it's a perfect time to go solar. It, it is. Um, you know, it's, it is a perfect time to go solar. And most of that is based on the fact that, you know, the cost of solar per kilowatt is lower than you can buy your first kilowatt of electricity from the electric company. I want to be clear about this, just because as a consumer myself, you're saying that when you finance, if you finance a solar system, that even as a just a base utility user from the utility company, you will pay less per month, most likely pay less per month to finance that solar than you will your actual electricity bill. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that. Wow, okay. Yeah. So what does the future bring for solar? Well, we, we are just entering the 5% um, cap that the net metering one had, and, and now we've got net metering extended. So the future for solar is great. We are allowed to continue net metering agreements, which is a huge catalyst for uh, controlling the, the price of solar. We're allowed to send excess electricity back to the grid and pull it back at a one-for-one -one exchange. Um, that is allowed to continue forward, so the future is great for California. That's awesome. All right, we have a fan question for you. And real quick before we get to that, there is an offer here. You want to, first of all, uh, be ready for this phone number. I'm going to give you in a second here. But here's the fan question. Should we shoot to totally zero out our electric bill, or is it good to have a small bill remain? Yeah, we have always, from the beginning, um, Encouraged our, callers, uh, encouraged our customers to zero out their electric bill. Uh, and because we knew that eventually the cost uh, per kilowatt that they're paying for solar would be less than the cost per kilowatt to purchase from the electric company. And that graph that I have that shows the cost of electricity from solar being less than the cost from the utility company um, is, is a perfect example to zero out your electric bill. So there's nothing wrong with generating more power than you can use and just kind of banking it. Right. Solar panels do deteriorate over time. You know, over 20 years, they're going to deteriorate, you know, a little bit. So we, we start to bill off, we start the um, solar production a little bit higher than what the customer typically uses um, because people's electricity rates have been increasing over time. 
All right. Great information. Brian Milholland, Milholland Solar and Electric, thank you for coming on with us. Sure. And listen, guys, 10% off up to $500 when you mention the Approved Home Pro Show. Call this number. Get a free estimate. By the way, you can find a lot of information out from the comfort of your own home. Call this number, 619-320-7373. That's 619-320-7373. And now we have uh, Jordan Frazier at American Vision Windows.